Hello, and welcome back to High Peak Education. What I would like to do in this video is show a calculation of what the magnetic field has to be for a certain radius outside a current carrying wire and inside a current carrying wire. In other words, we will use Ampere's Law and Amperian Loops with a closed loop line integral to calculate what the magnetic field must be at various radii from the center of this current carrying wire. Let's also assume that the current carrying wire is steady and uniformly distributed. It's a long straight wire of radius r and the current we'll call I and it's uniformly distributed throughout the area of the wire. Calculate the magnetic field at distance r from the center of the wire for when r is greater than capital R, which is outside the wire, and little r is less than capital R inside the wire. Okay, so we're going to use Ampere's Law twice here. So let's write down for ourselves what Ampere's Law is. Okay, so it's the closed loop line integral of B dot d s okay and then d s is some differential tangent vector element and that's equal to i sorry that's equal to mu naught times the i times the i penetrating a lot of people write this as just i or i enclosed but it's i penetrating penetrating through the area of sort of one of these circles that we choose it has a certain area okay so that's the idea now let's apply this first for uh, part number one now for part number one lowercase r is greater than capital r so we choose some amperian loop that is outside of capital r so little r is sort of arbitrary but it's sort of it has to be outside of big R, okay? So what we can do is we can say, what is B dot DS? Well, notice that DS is in this direction. And if we look at the magnetic field B, the magnetic field B, I think at this point of interest, the magnetic field B should be exactly also tangent to this Amperian loop. Now keep in mind, this Amperian loop, we should choose it with a certain symmetry. Notice that we could have chosen a very funny shape, but the reason we choose a circle with its center centered on the center axis of the wire is because we know that the magnetic field magnitude everywhere on this loop should be the same. Now that's a useful thing because then if B is constant for every theta, and if B is always parallel to theta, and if B is always parallel to DS, so we're going to say B is parallel to um, the DS, then we can just say that the dot product just becomes B DS, because it's the cosine of zero degrees, which is equal to, and this right here is equal to one. Okay, so that really simplifies the dot product. Okay, so that's taken care of the left hand side here of Ampere's law. How about on the right hand side? What's the current that's penetrating through this Amperean loop? Well, that should be the entire current. So that's capital I, that's just the total current. So the left-hand side, we have the closed loop line integral of B dS, and then we have equals mu naught, sorry, that's mu naught times I. So the total current. Now, B we know is everywhere constant with respect to dS. 
so we can pull it out of the closed loop line integral. And then now what we have is we have the closed loop line integral of ds, but that's just going to be the arc length all the way around this Amperian loop. So that should just be the circumference. So this right here is exactly the circumference of this Amperian loop. So that would be b times, and let me do times like this, times 2 pi r equals mu naught i. And it's lowercase r because it's the Amperian loop r. So we divide and we get b is equal to mu naught i over 2 pi r. Now, by the way, if you want to make this even a little more sophisticated, you can write this, it's a function of little r. And if you want to write this as a vector, you can do that. And notice if you do this, I put a blue box around this because we're talking about the strength of the magnetic field. But notice this has a very special form that is an equation we've already seen. This should be the what? This should be the magnetic field strength for a straight current carrying wire and just a distance r from the center. That's exactly what we expect because we're just outside a straight current carrying wire. We actually sort of derive that equation in the lecture notes from the Biot-Savart law. But I said, even in that lecture, that we can derive this equation um, much more simply using Ampere's law. Okay. By the way, we are still um, calling this a vector, so we should talk about the vector direction here. So what's the vector direction? Well, I think the vector direction you can say directed uh, counterclockwise tangent to the Amperian loop 1 shown. So kind of like pictured, we see that the magnetic field lines would be circulating in concentric circles and it's always going to be with the magnetic field vector is always going to be tangent to that Amperian loop okay which again are circles so you can even write that down these are um, circular magnetic field lines uh, centered centered on the uh, wire axis, wire central axis. Okay, so that's hopefully really clear what we're saying. Let's see. Now we want to do part two. So let's switch to part two and let's give ourselves plenty of space here. Now, part two, I think, is going to be a little more challenging because we need to consider the inside. Okay, so first of all, for part two, we use the inner Amperian loop. In other words, the one that's labeled here as number two. Okay, so notice the inner Amperian loop does not enclose all the electric current. But let's talk about the left-hand side here. The left-hand side, LHS, the left-hand side, should be the same. Now, why is that? Because it's going to be the closed-loop line integral of b dot ds. We're still going to have ds in this direction. We're still going to have, and that's not very well sketched, sorry. We're still going to have ds in this direction. We're still going to have B in this direction. So it's still going to be parallel. B is still going to be the same magnitude for all angles theta. Um, 
we're still going to be able to simplify it. And when we take the closed line loop line integral, it'll still be a circumference and it'll be two pi r. Because again, this little r being that little r is less than big R. Okay. Up here for number one, it was little r greater than big R. Okay. So I should actually write that here. Little r greater than big R. Okay. So then the left hand side should still turn out to be the same because I think it'll be b times 2 pi r. This will be b times 2 pi r. Okay, fine. But now we need to talk about the right hand side. So we've certainly got the mu naught, but then we need to think about what is the i inside, um, inside area 2. So inside this area 2. It's kind of inside here. So this is where we need to think carefully. So let's think about how we can get the I inside that area too. Now we are told that the current is uniformly distributed throughout the area of the wire. Now if you recall back when we first defined electric current, we defined this thing called current density. And remember, current density is actually electric current per cross-sectional area. So if it's uniformly distributed throughout the area of the wire, we can say that is constant current density. Dense, sorry, it's terribly written. Density. Okay. So if it's constant current density, remember, current density is this J. Okay. So this J is I over A, so current divided by cross-sectional area. Now, even though we don't sort of know it for here per se, we do know what the current density is for the whole wire. It should be the entire current divided by the cross-sectional area of the whole wire. So this is I total over the cross-sectional area total should equal to, watch this, I inside uh, area 2 divided by the area of 2. Now let's think about what this would lead to. I total is I, just the current we sort of know. The area total of this entire cross section would be pi big R squared, because the radius of the entire wire, I inside A2, I in, let's call it, and then the area 2 here is just going to be pi little r squared. So hopefully you can see that I can solve for I in. So I in is going to equal to, we need to multiply the pi r squared up, and the pi's would cancel. You're going to get i, the total current, times little r squared over big R squared. And then that expression can get substituted right in here for the inside current. So, what do we get? b times 2 pi little r equal to big I little r squared over big R squared. So we need to divide by 2 pi little r. So this is B as a function of little r is equal to, now let's be careful, the little r, one of the little r's goes away, but then the 2 pi, the big R squared, and the I are all constants. So that's big I over 2 pi big R squared times little r, I think. And that should be our answer. And that's our answer for inside the wire. In other words, for little r less than big R. Now, by the way, if you want to make this a vector, again, you would say the same thing over here, that it's counterclockwise tangent to this imperial loop number two. Uh, and you would say this is a linear function. 
Notice that this right here is a 1 over r, which is a hyperbola function, or sort of a reciprocal function. This is a linear function. So think about this. When you are inside the wire, as the radius is increasing, you're enclosing more and more current, so the magnetic field strength is getting greater. But the magnetic field strength should be greatest when you're right at the edge of the wire, because you've enclosed the most current, but the radius is still just capital R. But when you get further out into region 1, we have this 1 over R dependence. So in fact, to summarize, if you make a plot to summarize of B, the magnetic field magnitude, as a function of R, okay, so this is a function of R there, you'll notice that B is proportional to R um, inside the wire, and we get to capital R, where we get to our maximum value. And then B is proportional to 1 over R. So notice that, again, we would not want to choose uh, capital R as the radius for our Amperian loop. Because we cannot perform differential calculus right here, because this is a cusp. And the derivative is not equal to 0. It's not differentiable. So capital R being the radius of the Amperian loop is not a good choice. We should be outside or inside. But you see that this is a, this is a continuous function, but it's not differentiable at this one point. Okay, so I think that finishes the problem. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope that was helpful. Hope you now understand how to perform Ampere's Law. Please smash that like button if you enjoyed this content. Please subscribe to this channel to grow the channel. Please share it amongst your social network. Please feel free to leave a comment. And thank you very much for watching High Peak Education. I will see you in the next video.